I'm Rashmi Halker Singh. I'm the deputy editor of Headache. It is my pleasure to be joined today by Dr. Amina Pradhan, who is one of the authors of a recent publication entitled The Headache Research Priorities, Research Goals from the American Headache Society and an International Multi-Stakeholder Expert Group. Welcome, Dr. Pradhan. I'm so happy to talk to you about this wonderful work. Hi, so happy to be here. Thank you so much. So first of all, can you explain what are these research priorities? Um, tell, tell us about what this is. Yeah. Oh, boy. So this is a labor of love is what it is. Um, and so basically, this was an initiative launched by uh, the American Headache Society in collaboration with the uh, NIH, National Institute of Health, specifically NINDS, um, the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, um, as well as the International Headache Society. Um, and basically, the idea here was that we would come up, you, you know, in consultation with the broader headache community around the world with a set of research priorities that we could then use as a community to sort of have us moving in the same direction when it came not just to questions about research, but also questions about treatment strategies, you know, developing a sustainable workforce, addressing issues about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, as well as many other things, including the standard research things we think about, such as, you know, animal models, human models, pathophysiology, and things like that. So really, this was our attempt to engage the entire community and come up with some research priorities that we could all get behind collectively, so that, you know, we could all be moving in the same direction when it comes um, to improving the lives of headache uh, patients. So that sounds like a lot of work. You touched, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you touched on some, some big themes and big topics. I'm curious, and you also touched upon people around the world. Um, how did all of this come together? You know, how did you come up with this idea? And then how did you come up with these as the themes to tackle? Can you kind of walk us through what's the backstory? Yeah, so this is something that, you know, we've all been working on since around December 2021. So, you know, we're now August 2024. So it just gives you some like context in terms of in terms of how long it's taken. Um, and so essentially, this was something that, you know, between um, AHS and INDS and IHS, we sort of came together because there was this, this request um, and this need to come up with a set of agreed upon research priorities. And so the way that that process worked is we first had, um, you know, uh, an advisory committee uh, made up of leadership from AHS and NINDS, as well as representation from other um, scientists, clinicians, patient advocates, um, and industry representation. And we sort of came up with a framework of, you know, what are some eight broad categories that we think should be reflected within these research priorities? And then came up with a list of um, people that we thought would be good to lead each one of these different working groups. Um, and so then what we did was to sort of reach out to the people, leaders in our field and go, okay, let's come up with working groups that are specialized in these eight different priorities um, and go out there and come up with what do you actually think is the priority? So I'll give you an example. Um, one research priority, would have been um, animal models. And so animal models um, was chaired by Dr. Andrew Charles. And then he brought together a whole group of uh, basic scientists who study headache and use animal models. And they came up with collectively over a series of meetings, um, what would be the, in their minds, the most important research priorities that would be met within a short-term period, so two to three years, and a long-term period, so five to seven years. Um, and basically, then we all got together, we all reviewed each other's research priorities, and then we put it all up um, for the public to review. And I think what's really important to, to make note of is that, you know, every single working group included, you know, people who are experts in the field, but also um, patient advocates, 
um, as well as industry representation so that that way we could get the perspective from all of the different fields. But then what we did was to put it up on idea scale, which is this sort of public forum where people can um, make their comments and give their insights on what they think about the parties. Um, and it was actually kind of like the greatest source of peer review, because essentially what you're doing is you're saying, here it is. And not only did we put it up there, but we basically told, you know, we emailed, I don't know, it was dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of patient advocacy groups, professors, like industry people, like you name it, we compiled a list of people and sent them the link and said, here are these priorities. This is your opportunity. You've got pretty much like almost a year to comment on um, these priorities and tell us what you think. And then we'll go back to the working groups and integrate it. And that's exactly what we did. We took those comments, we integrated them accordingly. And then this was the final document that came out of it. So we're super excited because we feel like it's got like the buy-in of a lot of different people. That's amazing. Amazing to hear of what went into the development of all of this. So given that that's the work that went into this document, what do you hope to achieve for our, for our field of headache medicine? Oh, wow. Well, I am super excited about these do this document and these research parties because, you know, you know, I, I sort of talk about all the work that went into it, but the real work actually comes now, right? Because now collectively we've come up with things that we think that are priorities and they're very broad priorities, but they're very important for the next like big things in patient care and the next big things in, um, you know, making sure that we have a sustainable workforce or making sure that we're taking care of a broad swath of patients and not just um, a small sub select group. And so I think what, what, you know, what we, we really have to do now is go out there and advertise to the rest of the community that, okay, look, we did this work on these headache research priorities. Here they are. And so when you're thinking about research questions, when you're thinking about workforce development, when you're thinking about patient recruitment, have a look at these priorities and let's try to like all get on board and, you know, move in the same direction um, to, to try to advocate for these things and really, I think, thoughtfully um, approach this field in a way that we're collectively moving in the same direction. That's that's really, really, I think, a very insightful comment because you're absolutely right. This is all done to help influence what comes next. As you, um, you know, this is this is um, titled the headache research priorities, but you know, our, our uh, headache community is very diverse. We've got people who don't, who might not identify or think of themselves as researchers. They might be clinicians or educators or students or patient advocates, as you brought up. Um, what's in it for them? Why should they pick up this manuscript and read it? What, you know, what do you want them to take from this? Yeah, I think that people need to think about this as a blueprint for the future of headache research, right? And well, who cares about headache research if you're someone who's a clinician or a patient or whatever? And really, I think what's important to think about is that this is the next step forward. And it's not just the next step forward in terms of, you know, basic science of headache. It's the next step forward in terms of us understanding, you know, the mechanisms of headache. And therefore, you know, what are the new novel treatments that may be coming down the field, laying a framework for, you know, increasing um, our diversity and equity and inclusion in terms of patient care, in terms of clinical trials, in terms of advancement of our workforce, thinking about how it is that we can sustain like a workforce that really cares about patients and wants to move forward. Um, coming up with novel, thoughtful approaches to not just, you know, drug development, but also things that are related to drug development, such as that are important for patient care, such as increased quality of life, um, uh, including things like, you know, mental health therapies and things like that. You know, it's really looking at uh, patient care in a really holistic uh, approach and thinking about our headache community in a huge, broad, holistic context. And I, and I think that, you know, this is really a wonderful framework that we can just look at, regardless of what perspective we come to headache from, and think about, well, this is really where 
we can move forward. And it's kind of that we've agreed upon as a community to move forward. Well, I think it's wonderful. I think it's really um, helpful. I think this really gives us a lot of guidance as we move forward for from many different perspectives, research, uh, but not just that, for also for education and, and clinical practice as well. So thank you so much for contributing this uh, work, for all that you did to contribute to this as well. And thank you for speaking with me this morning. Great. Well, thank you so much uh, for chatting with me. I really enjoyed it.